This awesome. is the all hands call for IPFS for August 28th, 2017. And Lars is the moderator. And stepped up as That's me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, welcome. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, agenda items today, um, but if you do you have anything you'd like to talk about, please add it and we get to it in a bit. Um, otherwise, let's uh, start with a little... Oh, hey, could you mute whoever's typing furiously? David, thank you. <laughs> uh, so let's start with, with a round of what everybody's been to in, in the past week. And um, I don't know if we have any fixed order for it, so I'm just going to start, I'm just going to pick someone. Victor. <laughs> All right. If that's, uh, if that's cool. And then yeah, we can just go clockwise. <laughs> good idea. Um, so I currently or I'm looking into a bug with the Swarm peers uh, in JS IPFS, uh, writing some additional tests. Uh, some tests are not specific enough. Um, so we uh, introduced a bug where we listed all the addresses instead of just one address per peer. Uh, fixing that, and then I discovered a different bug that I managed to reproduce. So now I'm looking into that as well. Uh, other than that, I also noticed uh, a week or two ago that we haven't published the, uh, the source code for discourse installation, the configuration, and everything. And I also noticed there are some different things of what's deployed compared to what's written in the source code. So I'm trying to unify those so we can uh, have the configuration checked into source code. Uh, what else? I've also added the monitoring to JS IPFS. So now we can have JS IPFS listed in our dashboards, and I started looking into how to deploy multiple JS RPFS nodes as well. Probably have to speak a bit more with Lars to figure that out, together with the new debug uh, infrastructure that Lars is working with. Um, I think that's it for now. Great, thank you. Um, the next would be David Grisham. What's up, guys? Um, <clears throat> I started teaching a class last week, so I've been pretty bogged down with that. But um, I'm also, I've been working on Cluster a bit, and just getting a, a PR push through. And, and once I finish what I'm working on with Cluster, I'm going to start working on more test lab and biswap related stuff for the most part. Sounds good, thank you. Um, Jay? So I'm just, I'm just going to be thank you. Everybody's showing up on my screen. So thank you, thank you <laughs> Lars. So I have been goofing off last week. I was on vacation, but we're working on some ways to record calls as well as uh, video and store them in IPFS and utilize Filecoin once that's available. So what we're working on here in Phoenix is more towards the application side. And I'm just getting back on the grid, but uh, we'll keep you guys posted as to how that progresses. And hopefully we'll have a demo um, in the not too distant future. Okay, I'll um, surprised I'll paste I... that too. That's, um, hey everyone, uh, so I've been working on various things. Um, the most recent one uh, was my work on crypto uh, because it turns out web crypto is giving us more heartache than we had hoped for. So I've been working on that today and doing research and doing some things, experimentations. Um, the other things I've worked on, uh, I've worked on Ager, 
uh, there is a release of Adria. We're currently working through various issues of upgrading the various repos to that. Um, but it is much better now. So hopefully it will be less painful once the migration has happened. Um, other than that, um, oh yeah, uh, I finished upgrading for anybody who is interested in Bitcoin. I've finished upgrading Go IPLD BTC to be able to ingest SegWit, compat uh, SegWit blocks um, because that was broken since the new editions of the, the new format was changed uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, that's working now again, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, I think that's <clears throat> that's most of what I've been up to. Okay, great. Matt, you've seen a solar eclipse last week, haven't you? Yeah, I, I flew to Tennessee to see the eclipse. And though I passed through Nashville twice, I failed to see Johnny Crunch. He, he graciously was going to host me at his house, but I ended up camping in the woods longer than planned. So, but it was awesome. So yeah, I took some time off this last week, so I haven't been doing so much. But right now, I'm in Boston to co-host a workshop tomorrow um, with people from EDGY, the Environmental Data Governance Initiative, where they were behind a, a lot of the grassroots organizing with that data rescue events and, and all of those efforts. And so this workshop is all based around showing people how to use tooling they've built, which uses IPFS, how to use that tooling to uh, hold copies of the data that you rely on how to find whether there are already copies of data that you rely on stored somewhere on the distrib distributed web, uh, and also how to add information about those data onto the, distrib onto the distributed web. So it's basically starting to build uh, metadata patterns and cultural patterns and incorporating institutions into using the distributed web to hold and redistribute data that previously was held only in centralized ways. Um, so that, and yeah, I've been working on a bunch of stuff. Um, there's the discussions in, um, in discourse about content policies, which leads to interesting considerations of like long-term, how do we want to be approaching that as a community and how do we want to be steering that? So I've been working on some of that stuff behind the scenes. It's what's been keeping me busy. Exciting. <laughs> David? All right, my turn. So I started writing some notes on the things that I was going to mention so that I didn't forget anything. So first thing is, as, as Friedel mentioned, like Friedel started working on really cool, awesome, like compiling crypto primitives from Rust to ASM so that we can have fast crypto in the browser. And essentially, if you are a, a JSIPFS user today, and you're using JSIPFS in the browser, one of the things that's really important to know that we realized basically this last week is that if you load a web page from a non-secure that means point from an IP from a domain that does. IPFS tries to build any crypto primitive, it will fail and it will fail with a very cryptic error uh, because we, we completely missed the fact that like the browser just simply locks that API if it, the resource is being loaded without HTTPS. And so you get some error about like private key something or generate key p function is out there. Um, we, we are working on it, like we now are aware. Uh, and that's why like Prito started attacking this new option of like just, just getting um, crypto primitives to compile from Rust to JavaScript to get something that is fast and that does what we need. Uh, another solution is using JavaScript streams. And what we want to have in the short term, like today or tomorrow, uh, is just have better error logging so that the users understand what's going on. Uh, we saw at least like four issues of people like having this problem. And it was like actually all at the same time, uh, for weeks, like no one ever had this issue. And then suddenly everyone started like loading JSIPFS apps from IPs. Um, and 
it was very hard to reproduce because every local host test or like IPFS that I slash IPFS some ash test that we did always worked perfectly. But yeah, um, I'll post a link to the description of the problem on the notes. Uh, go ahead, Matt. I was just the the recording my connection, which is catching the recording, uh, slowed down right when you said, "What is the essential problem when you make a connection? To, when you make an insecure connection, what happens?" Uh, the essential problem is if you load a web page that uses JSIPFS from a non-secure endpoint. That means you are loading a web page from HTTP and not HTTPS. The browser, like it's a web crypto standard definition will lock the web crypto API and not let you call any web crypto calls. So you simply cannot use those primitives. Uh, they, they literally are not there. It's not even like the browser tells you web crypto is locked because it's an available resource in a non-secure endpoint. It just says, okay, this, is, this doesn't exist. It's undefined, right? Uh, and defined is not the function. Classic, that was good. Um, there, there's an even more fun, subtle notion to this why we never realized this is that on localhost, there is exemption from, for this. So exactly. as long as you serve non-HTTPS on localhost, you're fine. <laughs> so, Interesting. yes. And also the exemption doesn't touch, like there is exemption for localhost, there is no exemption for like local IPs. So no. someone might be trying, like having IPFS node in local network and it works from local host and it doesn't work from his second laptop that he has next to that is using the node. Yeah, and I, I also think not all browsers enforce this actually. I think only Chrome enforces this currently. It, it, mostly, like, it mostly became standard because of Chrome. Well, anyhow. <laughs> All right, so this is an issue. There is a solution. We do the crypto and JavaScript, or we do the crypto, which will be in uh, ASM.js by compiling it from Rust. Um, we, we got this. We just caught, work out by surprise. Um, and if you're getting this error, this is the issue. And there is an issue now on the notes for you to track the solution. Cool. So the next one that I have uh, to share with you is IPLD deep dives. So last Thursday, uh, we had the first meeting of what we are calling like a how ends for IPLD deep dives. There is like multiple verticals that people have been showing interest to discuss, to tackle, to implement, to re do more research upon uh, on IPLD land. And so now we have a call every Thursday um, at 4 p.m. UTC. I, I think we, I'm saying no, 3 p.m. UTC. At uh, 3 p.m. UTC, and um, part. With that call, we identified things that need to be done. Uh, I know that Stephen might share a bit on like his work there, but what I did since last Thursday was adopting all of the proposals for updating the format spec. So as you know, we have this interface format spec that uh, enables people to implement more formats to be supported by IPLD um, from DAC, Cibor, DAC, Part Above, Ethereum, uh, I know that Lucas is now working on Git, it's pretty awesome. And, and now we are giving a, a new update to that spec, adding more functions um, and uh, updating some of the old ones. And I would really appreciate if someone, if everyone that is interested in IPLD and that's a consumer of IPLD to go check it out, to make sure that like we are not missing something. Um, it would be, I, I, I linked also in the notes for this call. Um, I don't see any hands. I'm going to go to my next item. Next item uh, is... I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, let's finish oh. the round. <laughs> oh, and then let's get to the agenda items. Okay. Okay. Sorry. This is kind of my update. Oh, like the things I've been working on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just good to, to finish the round quickly first and then and then go into, into, into topics deeper. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next one would be Martin. Yeah, hi. Are you there? Um, okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay. Um, so I, I didn't get that much done last week. Um, I, well, Kubuksu discovered some uh, man in the middle vulnerability with the current state of my, my quick implementation. So I decided that the best way to move forward with 
this is to first do all the interface changes in uh, GoLib peer-to-peer uh, and then merge the quick specific stuff later. So I'm hoping that we can get the interface changes reviewed uh, this week now that Jeremy is back. And then for the actual quick merge, will probably take another another couple of months because I have to implement TLS 1.3 for quick, which will not be an easy task. But a rewarding one, I hope. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, next up is Dimitri. Hey guys. Um, so last week I spent some time working on, still working on the circuit, uh, kind of trying to get everything um, cleaned up and ready for release. Unfortunately, didn't get as much time as I expected to work on it. I was going to have a demo for today, but that's not going to happen, unfortunately. But uh, I am shooting for getting everything ready and prepped for possibly a release either this week or next week or whenever we're, we're going with the next JavaScript um, uh, release. So if everything goes smooth and we, we get everything reviewed and approved and I get everything cleaned up as well uh, for that, then we should have the circuit ready. Um, and mostly that's been what I've been up to. This week is looking a lot better, so I'll be able to spend a lot more time on this. That's it. Okay, awesome, thank you. Uh, Jérôme? Hey, um, yeah, so I took some time off last week to go drive over somewhere and watch the sun go away for a minute. Um, <clears throat> was pretty cool, definitely recommend it. Um, after that, been getting back and mostly just spending time reviewing people's code. There's a lot of other people's code to review. It's pretty great, pretty happy with it all. Um, and I look forward to continuing to review other people's code because there's still a lot of it. You guys are fast. Um, don't stop. Okay, sounds great. Steven? Uh, I was <clears throat> sorry. Last week, I was working on a uh, proposal for reorganizing uh, the interfaces in uh, Go IPFS, so the how the um, the DAG and the block store and everything fits together. Uh, you can find this on the uh, IPFS slash notes repository. It's issue two fifty five. I'd like comments and feedback. Uh, the current issues are that well, when we try to implement, or implement um, IPFS selectors, the current system just won't work because. Uh, Exchanges and things like that swap need access to IPLD at that point, not block or not the block service because they need to be able to like query IPLD. Um, so we're gonna have to reorganize this stuff anyways. Uh, I've also noticed that a lot of people are complaining about various parts of the system, saying like this piece of broken, this is broken, but I haven't seen any like overarching plans to try to fix everything. Uh, so yeah, this is basically a discussion of like, what's wrong, what or what are some ways of fixing it. If there's any. That's it. Okay, okay thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, next up, oh, I'm hearing an echo from myself. Uh, Steven, are you, do you still have your mic on? Oh, thank you. Um, next up is Viso. Welcome, by the way. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, so the, the last couple of weeks, uh, I've been working on my side project mostly because I'm yeah, going to ICFP next week. I'm giving a presentation on the Scheme Workshop on Sunday, so I've been working on Scheme-related stuff, but you know, I've started thinking about uh, the next little thing. So basically, we've been discussing about uh, a service to facilitate uh, service discovery through the DHD. So basically to formalize the notion of bootstrap that we use. Uh, by the record. And that kind of what I want to next. So other than that, oh yeah, next week I'm on an ICFP, just like in days now. Hmm. 
Okay, great. Uh, next up is Lucas. Yeah, so as David mentioned, I'm currently working on JS uh, IPLD handlers for Git, and that's pretty much it. It's it's getting kind of working, so it might be done like Wednesday. Maybe it will be functional. Sweet. <laughs> Could it appear decentralized GitHub in the browser? Hmm. That's a side project. <laughs> That's one of the coolest new features. I'm so excited for it. Uh, who's left? Uh, Kuba, Kuba and me. You want to go first, Kuba? So last week was kind of weird because I was reviewing lots of code. I've noticed one problem with one PR I was leading. It, was, it has G, uh, improved garbage collector, go IPFS. There's a small problem there where, because I'm trying to do garbage collect. So there was brace problem in garbage collector between MFS and garbage collector, but it was very small. The window was very small, but with how I do garbage collection currently, the window is much, much bigger. So I have to refactor that part. Also, for like last few days, I was looking into new pack uh, dependency manager from Go. Uh, it's called Dapp. And yeah, that's, that's it. And reviewing lots of stuff. So Lars, take it away. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I've been a bit sick last week, but I'm getting better. Uh, I fixed the bug in the gateway deployment. That was kind of annoying because, well, it was buffering responses to disk. Um, and so if somebody downloaded a large file, then all these gigabytes were buffered to disk for just a few seconds. And that led to interesting oscillations in free disk space. Um, but that's fixed. Um, I'm writing a bit. Um, on um, path addressing and URLs in the past couple of days. Made some notes. I'm going to turn that into pros. Um, and um, David and Matt are going to like it, I think. Um, oh, and Matt, while well, you mentioned that workshop tomorrow, I um, remembered something about a distributed web maturity model that I wanted to write. Yes. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get to that today. Uh, some notes, but it just haven't turned them into anything readable. Um, so yeah, that and and I've had a little breakthrough with the new gateway gateway infrastructure last night and automatic TLS certificates in particular. Um, so I'm gonna show that next week. The agenda would be update on web crypto. We covered that, I think, right? And we covered IPLD deep dives. And then next up is a JS IPFS release. All right. It's my turn again. Can I? Can yeah, I go, go for it. So, <laughs> update. Um, this IPFS 0.25.2 was released. It was a patch release. Um, so no big like issue with a lot of flare because mostly like things stay the same, but better. Uh, there were fixes that were bubbled up the we peer to peer tree um, to BitSwap and then fixes that happened in BitSwap that were bubbled up to just IPFS. Uh, we already got some reports from our users that now they see BitSwap faster and also more reliable. There was a couple of issues that were open that now are not there anymore. So that's pretty exciting. If you're using JSIP fast, make sure to do these patch updates because you might see some significant improvements. API-wise and feature-wise, so the same. Uh, with the secret that like, if you actually go experimental DHT true, it turns on the DHT, but as the flag suggests, it's still experimental. Um, the next item on the agenda. So, like, if no one has questions on this, I can go to the next one as well. I have a question, to be Go ahead. Yeah. Does it does it light your browser on fire when you turn the experimental DHT option on? The only thing that really makes browser, 
Well, because like, so we, we have been getting a lot of reports uh, and I just want to be clear on that, of like people seeing a lot of browser resource consumption. And, and there's like two main reasons for that. One of them is WebRTC. Like WebRTC is a monster consuming resource of the browser. Like in every single application, right? Like open the uh, today chat app, video chat app, uh, talky appearing and so on, like they will consume a lot of results from your browser. And we abuse WebRTC, like we open a bunch of connections and then we like use it to send like all of these tiny packets um, with multiples of them, right? And because we do the routing on the main thread, it means that the browser main thread really becomes stretched to process everything that it needs to process in order to decide which things to send to which connection. Um, unfortunately, like most browser vendors only see WebRTC as a video and audio transport, and they have like some special code paths that benefit those use cases. But still, again, like go to a, your regular web video chat app and you will see a lot of resources being consumed. So that's that's an issue. That like takes me to the next point of connection closing. Uh, the other issue with like browsers that consume a lot of um JSAPFS apps that consume a lot of resources is really the fact that like people are putting their JSAPFS node on the main thread. And like again the main thread is like a single event loop and like we do a lot of operations. Uh, we do a lot of stuff like we do crypto, we do like routing, we do like there is so much stuff going on that putting that CPU bound, CPU intensive operations on the same thread of us UI, it is clear, is expected to see some slowness and some some fight, like the browser fighting with itself to be able to respond to all the requests. So what we want really is like web workers and service workers. The, 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 the thing that sucks is like uh, web workers and service workers don't support WebRTC. And, and, and so this is like, this go back and forth of like how to move forward uh, in a way that's like really nice for the users that they don't have to find these problems. Lars? Uh, would just simple background pages from an extension work? Simple background pages from an extension. Um, that should be, again, a better solution than running everything on a main thread, but it still has the same problem that like WebRTC doesn't exist there. Oh, got it, so, got it. Okay. So, uh, also, you have the issue that if you put it into the background, it also will crash because WebRTC eats everything then it crashes. Okay. If we actually, because if you currently put JSIPFS in a regular page and just put it into the background, it will eventually crash and burn. Oh, oh, that's, that's the that's resource what consumption. What, what I meant yeah. was a page uh, opened by an extension, like not a, mm -hmm. not a content page, but a background page. Um, that, that's what I meant. Right, right. Yeah, but that will probably still crash and burn even if we get WebRTC available. Uh, it is two things. So. Uh, what Wars is suggesting is like extensions actually have a, a process for themselves, right? Like they, if they, even if the process crashes, they can restart and doesn't affect the main page. Like the app of the user can still run. Um, and Frito, you're right. Like there is definitely do resource consumption and also due to Chrome aggressive throttling policies. So if you uh, haven't read the issue, like if you put a tab or if you put a window, like your standard app on your OS on front of Chrome. And if it covers a significant part of the tab, Chrome will stop that app. <laughs> I'll just like block it, right? So all of the, the stuff that like the node is trying to do to be like very uh, fast to like, for example, receive one list and process which blocks it as to send it back, it will stop all of that. And then like when you take your app out of front of Chrome and like you you show the, the tab again, then the Chrome will give resources back to that page. And now you have like thousands of messages waiting for that thing to uh, to process, right? So it's just like madness uh, for for the for the nodes to to handle and, and that gives leads to some weird situations. Uh, Firefox is different though. Uh, and, and this is again connected to yes, it is very hard to do these things in the browser, but we can be so much better in the way that we manage resources. Right now we are we have a very aggressive policy where we open all the connections that we can. Um, and as we know from GoIPFS 
we need to find a way to close connections graciously and effectively, like close the ones that are not used. Uh, and you just happen to notice that ingest IPFS faster because it's a constrained environment with a lot of uh, rules and restrictions and, and like a lesser and a smaller number of connections makes a, a bigger impact than like for example go ipfs that has access to full machine resources so yeah the next item on the agenda that i added is connection closing and i open an issue describing these problems and more and this should be like one of the prior top priorities for us to to get done at least like it might not be perfect but like we definitely should not let the node crash by running out of resources i would argue that it's better to say hey like can't really open a new connection already has too many might pick one to drop um then just like let the node um kill itself because it, it, it just becomes too eager to open connections to other nodes uh, as jeremy once put it like ipfs is a social butterfly and, like what's stuck with everyone <laughs> uh, uh, and that causes troubles and problems but, but yeah so pay attention to that issue or if you have ideas comments suggestions please do share them uh we don't have to discuss this in detail here i think it will take more than an hour uh, but yeah like the the link is on the notes so yeah any questions comments thoughts ideas matt this is actually you you switched from the previous one quickly you mentioned that it sucks that web web workers don't support web rtc the people who are working on web worker and web extension specs are really receptive to feedback and we do have a github issue this list that where we're trying to collect the list of what are the they basically repeatedly asked us what are the things you would want changed because they will look into changing it. So make sure to record those things on this issue so that we can pass that information on. We'll do, we do. Um, just at, like if you search through the WebRTC, um, both W3C and IT, IETF, you will see a lot of emails, well, not a lot, maybe some emails from me, for us and others that were like asking for more than a year now, maybe two years even to put WebRTC on service workers and web workers. Um, and unfortunately, the spec community was always very reluctant to consider that um, feature because, um, they, again, like they really privileged like video and audio connections. And for that, WebRTC works well because video and audio connections have special flags inside the browsers that say this connection should not ever stop. Um, which is not the same for the other channels. I agree, we, we, we should like just, again, um, raise this uh, problem as something that they, they need to fix. Um, but it is something that we've been talking with them for more than a year now, for sure, uh, as a, a substantial problem of enabling peer-to-peer -peer on the web. Just wanted to share that. Uh, cool. Did someone say something? I said thanks. <laughs> Go on then. What's next? Oh, you have a demo, right? So I have, a very I have a very tiny demo. Uh, Yay. It isn't beautiful, but it works. So let me share with you. Um, it is, yeah, let me share my screen. Something doesn't have to look beautiful in order to be beautiful. <laughs> I guess I was already including those cases. <laughs> In fact, book rig really simple. So you can see my screen. Uh, this is just the um, browser, Brave browser, a repo with um, in a branch called feed IPFS. And if we look at the extensions folder, uh, we look, there's like three extensions here. One is Brave, Brave, the Brave browser basically is an extension around itself. Uh, and then there's like a torrent extension and an IPFS extension. And if you look at the IPFS extension, um, you have the manifest here, um, basically describes what it is and like the logo. And you also have some JavaScript. And the JavaScript, main.js, which is the entry point, does two things. 
uh, registers two protocol handlers, IPFS and DWeb. And once that happens, basically it boots up a node and like I always catch the same hash because I've been focusing on figuring out content security problem, policy problems, uh, but I'll go more in depth on that. But yeah, catch an hash and then um, replies back to the response uh, to the request that someone made on these protocols uh, with the content of that hash. So to run Brave, you have always to run a watcher that like is constantly building the app for like checking if there is changes and building it. And then you also have to start the actual process. So here, it should start Brave. But I suppose if you feel free to ask questions as I go because some of these things take time for some reason. Uh, as you see, a browser takes some time to load. So if I go here about the extensions, you can see the IPFS extension is here, which is kind of nice. And if I go to IPFS column slash flash, and I can type anything here because I don't, I'm not really paying attention now to the content of this. I'm, I, again, as I said, I'm just cutting the same hash over and over again. And now what this is doing is all of these steps, starting a new node, waiting for the node to get ready, connecting to the bootstrapper nodes and getting this hash. And again, once it gets this, that this hash, doing the bit swap thing, it replies back using this callback here. And yeah, like, so the hash that I was loading is just, hey, Rave. It's like a very simple old world of JSFFS running and this source um, follows directly what was your proposal. This is like JSFFS running in a background process of a Chrome-like extension but in the Brave browser. Uh, so this is pretty exciting. Like we, we, we have been working on this for, well, maybe a couple of weeks, a bit on and off, but, but, but it's possible now. Like pretty much like all the issues that we had to make this happen were content security policy related things. Um, if, you, if you check, here the, um, the IPFS and then index IPFS HTML. Uh, you see that I don't have, I removed completely the, the content security policy. Uh, and the other way that I would add the content security policy would be by white listening, white listing, listing uh, not listening, white listing all of the nodes that we connect on startup. So all of the bootstrapper nodes, which is not really an ideal solution because when you are running a node, you really want the freedom to connect to any nodes that's on the network, that's on a public IP, that's on the public domain. And with content security policy, which is a required mechanism, and that's something that I'm working with the Brave team to understand the implications right now, is how can we ensure that this extension runs in a constrained, in a secure environment, but without, without having the, the restriction that the content security policy explicitly makes, which is once you have even one line of content security policy, you have to declare all of the endpoints that that app can dial beforehand, before it loads. And there is no way to automatically load new, new things. So, so yeah, uh, again, tiny demo, Yes, if you're running on the Brave browser, uh, expect next week. Next week, I want to come back with actually like loading several ashes and web pages and so on. Uh, as I said, I've been very focused on this content security policy things. Um, but yeah, it is happening. Um, it's um, full browser integration. I'm really excited about this. I, I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> super cool. <laughs> Any questions? There is a, like a big PR, like so if you go to my user account, there is um, a fork and then a PR directly to the main repo on the Brave organization. And like the PR basically describes the epic adventure I've been on, just like to figure out how to add the protocol handler, how to solve the CSP, how to get the Chrome extension to give me the ability to register a protocol handler. That, that was another fine. So, so yeah, that's been fun. Uh, Jeremy, I see that you have your hand up. 
So in your code, you I saw you buffered the entire output of the hash before passing it to the browser. That's not a requirement, is it? Uh, right now it is. I actually already requested the team to give me a streaming handler. Right now, the only thing that move on, which is a fork of Electron, supports. So um, that's it's really actually disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Well, from what I understand, it is totally doable to do the streaming thing. Um, they just haven't done it. Uh, not sure if that's a security concern from the team. Like they, they were. Yeah, I, I haven't received a clear message on that. Like it should not be a problem. It should be just like a an implementation thing. But yeah, another thing that I want is to be able to also like send a web page. For example, I would love for an IPFS file to be loading and like to just like load first the web page that like shows a progress bar or something and it's just a like, signal that page to show that the content is being unloaded. Like if you if you are downloading a PDF, for example, you want some signal to the user, you want to tell the user something. So you want to be able to like um like through app sockets or some some IPC thing to signal to the web page that's being rendered that the file is coming and it's progressing. And when it's done, then like load the whole file and then get the file downloaded through the regular browser API. But yeah, definitely good eye. <laughs> there is an issue open for that. I can find it here. <laughs> Uh, Matt, is that a hand? Yeah. This reminds me of a related topic, which is getting JS IPFS in Electron apps. Um, could you give a quick update on the status? So, um, this week? Uh, uh, so update and, and what more? Um, you cut it a little bit. Uh, running JS IPFS in Electron apps. It's been bubbling up in uh, in discourse this week, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. you, you've been you've been pushing it forward. So I just wonder if you could give an update. Sure. Uh, so the, there is, so using Electron, or using JSIPFS in Electron works if you use JSIPFS on the render process. So that is equivalent to a browser page on the Electron, which is more or less what is happening here. Um, it's very similar to this context that I'm running inside the Brave browser. What doesn't work yet, is running just IPFS in the Node.js process, also known as the main process of Electron. It is um, mostly due to our use of some native dependencies that Electron doesn't rebuild them well for their own version or, or like their own internal Node.js version. And, and so um, the solution there is, or just to figure out how to build those native dependencies for Electron, which there's like some tooling, there's like Electron Rebuild and there's like other tooling, but like so far I haven't been successful with any of that. Um, I know there's like many packages in Node.js land that are native that work with Electron and there's others that don't work. Um, another solution is just remove all of the native dependencies uh, and like just use JavaScript, pure JavaScript and like have a build of just IPFS that <laughs> might be slower and like Frito you know, is like covering his head. Um, might be slower, but it works for the native, um, the main process, the the Node.js process of Electron. If people want to run um, JS IPFS there, the the other thing that is interesting to note in the conversation of Electron is if you want to run on the Node.js process and node of IPFS. Another thing that you can do is run um, a Go IPFS node with a JS IPFS API client. So that's what Orbit did for a very long time, right? Like Orbit was always running uh, a Go IPFS node with JS IPFS API client. And Electron has a very cool feature where you can pass, you can grab an instance of an object and say, send this to the other process. And what it does, it creates automatically an RPC that links any call that you do on the renderer process to the Node.js process. So, uh, so very long time, like Orbit was running and you know, like doing everything on the renderer process, but the nodes was instantiated and running on the Node.js process. Um, I can write more. Like if you if you are going to have a meeting and people are asking for this, I can write more notes on all these options. If you, that would be helpful. Yeah, it was more even just to there's so there's that issue. I just posted these in the chat in the 
uh, Zoom chat. There's the issue 843 that you have been gradually updating, and then there's a new discussion on discourse about it. So mm -hmm. just toss in some sort of reference point or suggestion for the people who are trying to build stuff this week. What should they do? Um, rather than, because if you read those threads and you read the, the GitHub issue, it sort of feels like, well, you just got to wait until you've removed all those dependencies. When I think they actually, mm. they actually do have options for building stuff. It's just not clear what their options are. Okay. Okay. I will like describe these three options here that I, I just shared through cool. the video. Thank you. And, and Dimitri just chimed in saying that on IRC saying that he's also got this on his radar is something to work on. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so this was my update. Thank you. No problem. Super interesting as always. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, if there's any last words from anybody? No? Okay. Then um, I'm going to call the meeting adjourned and see you on IRC or on the Discourse forum or in GitHub issues or at the same place in a week. Right? Yep. Yep. Or on the IPLV deep dives Thursday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mark his words. <laughs> right. Okay. See everybody.